Hello, welcome to this first tutorial for XUS Airways. Uh, this first one is all going to be about getting your ACARS set up so that your flight simulator X-Plane can report back to the website here that you see we've already signed into uh, and it can give you your figures for fuel burn, profit and loss um, and your hours etc etc. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sign in with your pilot ID which is your email uh, and then your password. Um, hit enter and you're in brings you straight in from your pilot control. Now what you can see up the top here is all sorts of different facets which we'll cover in different tutorials. What we're going to explore at the moment is your is your ACARS um, and putting that in there and getting that all done properly. So once you're signed in and you've signed up for the website um, you would be able to um, take a look at this first page. It's going to have three options down here where it says X ACARS. It says it'll download your X ACARS config which is specific to you and your login. Um, it'll uh, give you a download to the XA Cars plugin for X-Plane and it'll also give you a tutorial on how to set it up. This is obviously a video tutorial so it gives you a step-by-step -step process to do it. What we're going to do now is if you download your XA Cars config it'll download, um, as you'll see here, um, a config file which you put inside the plugin within X-Plane. I'm going to show you where that actually goes. I open up a finder window here, and I'm sorry for you, for all of you guys on a PC. Um, this is for Mac, obviously. So I'm going to go into my Resources, Plugins folder, and within there you should see an XACARS folder. Open that up, and you'll see a, um, a dot .ini file. That's what will have been downloaded, um, and that's what you will place in there. So I've, I've done it twice here, so you can see. If you go have a look here in my uh, downloads folder, the most recent thing is that xacars.ini folder file, which you just pull straight into uh, your xacars folder within your resources, then plugins folder within Xplane. I hope that explains that. Now, what uh, we need to look at now is how this operates within Xplane. Uh, to do that, I'm going to fire up Xplane. Okay, after. Starting up X-Plane, you can see that we're at Charlotte Douglas International Airport on the tarmac, uh, gate A11. Um, we're in an A319 Airbus, um, and we're sitting on the tarmac, cold and dark, no systems running. What I'm going to do now is just take you through very basically how to get up and running and how to use the website and ACARS within X-Plane to figure out a way to get them communicating with each other. Once you've done it once, it's very easy, it'll remember all your settings. So here we go, we'll go into the cockpit. Um, initially just going to turn everything on and now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the plugins window here at the top um, and in this plugins window here you shall see that XA cars is sitting there as one of the options so you click on it open XA cars and you should see that it comes up with this window here you can position that wherever you want on the screen I like it in the bottom left what we're going to do here is you've got a couple of options you can enter manual information in here corresponding to the website what I like to do is use technology um, to communicate with the website directly through this plugin. Scratching your head and wondering what I'm talking about. It's as simple as this. Let's go back to the website. In the website, you'll have an area here which will say um, flight schedules. I want you to click on that. And it's going to give you every one of the uh, broadcasted routes for XUS Airways, and there are thousands of them out of each of our airports and our hubs. So there's far too many in there for me to pick from at the moment. Now, having already told you that I'm in an A319 Airbus, I'm going to pick routes that are specific to that aircraft. There's my A319, and we find flights. Okay, so these are all the, air, air, um, the routes that we have for the A319. I'm make it very easy and just pick this first one. So you'll see this is going from Charlotte to Pittsburgh. All the details are here, the route, the departure, and everything else. If I was to enter it manually, I'd have to go back and do this all piece by piece by piece. All I need to remember here is the flight number, 1007. Now let me go back into x -Plane. I'm going to type in here, AWE1007. And this is as easy as then clicking flight data via ACARS. Now you see within a couple of seconds, it puts all the information in there, including my altitude, my aircraft, uh, registration number and 
everything is communicated with the website to tell us. What it's also done is put a random generated passenger count in there, so I'm carrying 103 passengers. Now that'll be important obviously when you come into land, shut your engines off and get the ACARS report back. Um, um, that'll tell you what sort of profit you've made um, based on the amount of passengers in the, on the plane and also the ticket prices currently. All you do now is start ACARS and it'll say ACARS tracking starts now. Give it about 5 to 10 seconds and it should bring you up some information about its live tracking now. Um, and as I say, you can then just minimise that window and you won't have to look at that again until you shut the engines down. Very important, don't try and start ACARS with your engines running, it won't like it, it won't record and it'll give you an error message. Um, now you see it started, uh, it's given us our registration number of the aircraft, um, so we can see that that flight ID is AWE or Cactus 1007, so we can hide that. What remains to do now is then decide if you're going to fly this online, um, offline, whichever you want, um, and then you're going to put the flight plan in, which will be another tutorial about how to put the flight plan together using this. Um, I'll do one just based on how I do it and how easy it is. Um, obviously, if you, uh, if you have other suggestions about how to file a flight plan or put a flight plan together that works better for you, then please continue to follow that. These are not rules to, to follow, it's just the, the way it works best for me. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head back over to the website. Um, and look at a couple of cool things that are now enabled once my ACARS is running. Um, the route map or the live map here should uh, should show us that I'm um, logged and now uh, ready to go. Uh, the live map here, if it's working properly, should show me on the ground. And there we are, AW002, there I am, uh, Charlotte to Pittsburgh. Um, and if I show that aircraft there. go, Philip Wyatt, flight 1007, Charlotte to Pittsburgh, that's there it's saying that I'm en route, but it's actually you know, sitting at the gate, so there's a few bugs obviously to iron out, but uh, for the most part it's working beautifully. Um, other, some nice er other areas here is in flight schedules. This is very, very impressive indeed. If we go to the flight that we just picked, um, which is 1007, you can click on the pilot brief going to give you every bit of information you're going to need to know as a pilot. In order to put your flight plan together, I usually just highlight this route, copy and paste it into my flight planning system, which is usually simroutes.com, and I will again do another tutorial on how to do that, how to get that into explain it into your FMS to put the flight together. This is superb, this pilot briefing, because it gives you um, detailed information about weather, uh, not only your um, origin, but also the destination. Um, you can see example here at Pittsburgh where we're going. Um, we've got winds at 130 at 8 knots. Um, that's going to dictate pretty much where we're going to land. And you can look on both sets of diagrams here. I've got airport diagrams automatically generated here for both Charlotte and Pittsburgh. And what I tend to do is flip between um, one and the other while we're flying just to make sure that I'm, I'm uh, properly prepared. The weather you can see is current got a beautiful day across the entire continent. Um, doesn't seem to be any weather systems at all flying around. High and low pressure um, areas here that you can plan on where there might be a few bumps. Where we're going to be on this eastern coast, you see that there's not a lot going on. Uh, so it'll be a smooth smooth trip. A couple of cloud systems there, um, but nothing that should affect us from, uh, from North Carolina up to, uh, to Pittsburgh there. Um, none at all. So and then we get a turbulence density map at the bottom here, um, which is where you could consider a few bumps and jumps as you could come up to the, the cruise altitude. Um, moderate turbulence, nothing heavy at the moment. And again down the bottom we've got another uh, the high and low systems uh, moving across the country. These are all absolutely live um, and each time you click the pilot briefing it'll renew that information so you'll have up to date. So that's a really cool area to look at. Um, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to get a, go ahead and get back in the aircraft, get my clearance, head out, enjoy this flight to Pittsburgh. Just an aside before I sign off again, is when you are uh, stopped your flight and you've pulled up to the gate and you shut your engines down, very important that the, uh, the ACARS bar will come back up again. Um, let me open it up and show you. Um, it'll automatically pop up. And instead of saying... Um, 
this information here, it will say, hope you had a nice flight, and there'll be an option down here to send the PIREP. Make sure you always send it, because then it's going to communicate again, it's going to send all the flight information back, and you will get credit for your flight. Otherwise, it won't, and you'll find yourself very annoyed that you didn't send the PIREP. Um, so important, send the PIREP.